Welcome back guys. Today I'm going to show the Substance Painter milling tool. And I'm going to show it on the pre preview sphere first because it's already set up to use uh, anastropic um, shading basically. So I'm going to remove the disk part and then I'm going to import the Substance Milling Brush. Boop. And we're going to say it's a procedural and we're going to put it in the current session. There we go, there we have it. It looks like a normal map, but it's uh, actually more than the sh just that. So if I put in a new paint layer and then set it to only be active in the, we'll use the height as well. So it's gonna be active in the height channel, the anisotropic angle, and we're gonna set up the level as well. So the level, let's go to 0.85, height minus 0.125, and the anisotropy, <laughs> it always gets me, anisotropy angle, um, we're going to drag in the brush. And it'll automatically select the right output. Uh, there's more outputs on the way, uh, some roughness variation. And um, I'm thinking about uh, base color variation as well, but that's in a future update. So for now, this is what we have. And then I'm also going to drag it into the alpha. And the important thing to note is that if you want to change the settings for the uh, alpha, you have to change them in the uh, other instances where it's used as well. In this case, the uh, anisotropy angle. Uh, please correct me <laughs> if I'm saying it incorrectly. Um, so now you can see that we have a, let me move the light a bit. We have a, a brush and what it's gonna do is when we move it, you can see it's kind of rotating, but it's not where we want it already. Um, so what we're going to do is we'll, we will change the spacing to one. That means it's going to do more stamps basically per, uh, per stroke length. So now if I brush it, you can see it's rotating quite fast. And we're actually sculpting inward. So if we're going to uh, enable displacement, and it is there, but it's just not active for now. So set it to 0.125 or something, not too crazy. And now we're actually milling into the surface using the height that we set in the height channel here. And what was that? So it's using a negative value, meaning that it's, it's uh, protruding, uh, sorry, it's not protruding, it's being um, pushed inward. Let's go to perspective and move the light a bit. You can see that it's doing the uh, cool uh, anisotropic shading, which is really neat. And this brush, uh, we've, we've been testing it for, uh, for multiple things. Uh, you can do uh, some really artistic stuff with it, but you can uh, just use it for, for your milling effects. Um, and the idea behind this was that it's gonna be useful for things like uh, weapons, uh, damaged metal, and you can actually make something that resembles uh, welds as well. That's going to probably be a, a future tool. So there we go. And let me turn off the height for a moment. That way we will just see the anastropic shading doing its thing. And if for those not uh, knowing, uh, you can actually use control click sorry, control shift and click to get straight angles compared to your previous uh, line. And you can also um, let go of control and just get uh, free, uh, how would say that, different angles depending on, on where you want to draw. So you can make cool uh, zigzag patterns, etc. Uh, pretty organically, pretty fast. And you'll see that it's going to do uh, very nicely with the shading. You can scale it. Uh, currently this is in 2K, but just as an example, I do have a beefy PC, but it works uh, pretty much flawlessly in 4K as well. It's really, really performant. And what I also want to show is some of the parameters. Let's just, uh, we're back at 2K again. Um, we'll remove this layer, add a new one, drag in the, oh, it's already there still, that's nice. Is it also in the alpha? It is. So now we can change the settings for the bit a little bit. That's no pun intended though. So if we set it to two, you can see immediately that the shape is changing. And we're gonna set the wear to max. 
and let's change the radius to 0.75 for the outer radius and 0.7 for the inner radius so now we get a uh, uh, different shape tool basically we're going to do the same in here so bit settings 2 maximum wear outer radius 0.75 inner radius 0.7 you can see that it's already giving us some, some really different results. And what you could also do, uh, aside from, from scaling and, and painting and experimenting, of course, um, is changing the flow, flow jitter. And this will uh, change up the intensity of the brush, giving you a more irregular result. And if you combine this with the height again, you'll see that it'll uh, extrude downward and you can get some really nice um, shaded uh, w um, milling marks basically so now I'm gonna set up how uh, sorry show you how to set up this for yourself so we're gonna do a open sample discard and you can do this in any project uh, basically um, I'm picking the tiling material because it's easy to view and we're just going to remove everything in here add a new fill layer, I'm just going to make it something metallic this is not necessarily going to be super PBR accurate putting a material finish just to get some cool metal stuff going on and we're going to change up the environment map to get something a bit easier on the eye you can do this according to your own preference of course F1 to see what we're doing again so now you notice that we don't have all the channels um, required for um, an isotropic uh, shading basically but first I'll show you that you can also use it um, just as uh, an ordinary brush without that uh, specific shading so we're going to change the uh, spacing again setting it to 1 there we go and we will turn it on only in the uh, height and normal so the height we can lower that to like 0.125 again and for the normal I'm gonna pull in the brush and we'll just leave the settings as is and now you should be able to see some oh let me turn off the uh, displacement it's a bit distracting there we go you can see that you can get some, some similar shading to that as well, uh, what we just have. That's just because of the uh, normal map basically uh, containing angle uh, and slope information that tells the shader that light is bouncing uh, off of this in, in a specific direction. Um, so an another way to kind of emphasize that is uh, going to your normal channel. Well, not emphasize, but uh, tweak it basically. So now you can lower it a bit, and this is not using any form of anastropic shading. So if you still want cool milling effects, but you don't want it to be specifically uh, anisotropic shaded, then you can do it in other ways as well. And we could also change the roughness up a little bit, lower it, and that'll, at least in the new painting painted areas, give that fresh metallic uh, look where stuff has been milled away and we can change up the size and everything uh, again as well I'm not very much of a painter which is kind of ironic in Substance Painter <laughs> but there we go um, but to set up the anisotropic shading uh, we go to the shader settings and you can see kind of like that anisotropic effect here and if we hover over it you can see that it, this is the one that we want and then in the texture set settings we need to have channels to store the information uh, for the shader that it's going to use so we'll add an isotropy angle and anisotropy level and then back in our layer um, over here uh, we can just specify a default layer and level so we'll just set it uh, sorry uh, angle and level we'll set it to zero and then in our new layer we'll just name it uh, milling for clarity and the other one metal there we go and in the milling layer we can now say that in the angle channel 
it uses the brush as well. There we go. Picks the right angle, uh, sorry, the right channel right away. And uh, just as a reminder, you do have to change your settings uh, to match if you are using the same brush in multiple uh, channels. That way your results will be very accurate and you won't get weird artifacts that don't line up with your uh, your brushes. Then we go to the anisotropy level. So it's usually a bit high. I'm going to show you what it does if you uh, put it too high. And I'm going to disable the height for now and the normal. There we go. And now you can see that it's doing uh, the anisotropic shading again. And it's, it's super satisfying. It's hard to not make uh, uh, sounds when <laughs> using the milling tool, actually. Um, but if we set it too high, uh, I think then the angles get so steep that the shader doesn't really know what to do with it. Uh, I might be wrong. Uh, let me know uh, if I am, because uh, I really uh, want to know more about how the uh, anisotropy shading works under the hood, kind of. Um, you can you can choose different levels and uh, therefore intensities here it's more like a surface polishing surface polishing and the higher you crank it the more uh, it'll look like uh, deep milling actually in the in the shading and it does have uh, a bit of a welding bead look to it of course it's not actually uh, using that height information but who knows you could you could tweak it any way you want uh, basically um, and there you have it uh, the tool is on ArtStation already uh, if you want to try it out uh, it's on my ArtStation store which I will link in there and uh, yeah if you want to see more uh, videos like these uh, more tools uh, just let me know uh, feel free to like and, and subscribe of course um, and if you have specific requests or feedback or, or want to know more or uh, have suggestions for tools that you would like to see, let me know and I'll definitely consider it. And yeah, I'm hoping you guys like these videos and see you until the next one.